Hello everybody and welcome to PopCon, powered by GX, a salute to all pop culture, but mostly the 80s. I'm your host, Victor, your G1 host. And if you're coming back to the channel, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support, but things are changing. PopCon is going to go through some changes, but I'm going to get to those big reveals a little later as I want to show you some of the locations that my show will be coming from. This is one of them. It's my office as well as the PopCon Playhouse. Actually, it's got a lot of work to get done. I have a lot of things to fill in the room and show off, a lot of things to fill in on my toy shelf as well. But uh, although PopCon will be transforming, mm -hmm, um, what won't change is our mission. PopCon is connection, conversation, and commentary about all things pop culture, but mostly in the 80s. <laughs> as you can tell behind me, PopCon is about all things that remain in the pop culture consciousness. If you're new to the channel, don't stop, don't change the channel, keep watching, give it a chance. I love that you're here and you're going to enjoy the show, but I really need your help. I'd like to get to that first big goal. I'm looking for my 100th subscriber and I've only got 23 more to go. So if you could do me a favor and press that subscribe button, it's not going to hurt, it won't cost, and you won't be annoyed by all those silly alerts, unless you want to. And if you do, I'd appreciate it. You can go into your notifications, set it to alert you whenever there's new content, and believe me, PopCon's gonna provide a lot of new content now and going forward. PopCon is so many things. Sometimes I'll come from right here where I am today, and sometimes from our new studio. So that new studio will be revealed in the future. It's getting there, so, um, but before that and why we're here, let's talk about collecting and the adult collector. I'm gonna show you around, but first, what is it with collecting? There are no rules to collecting. Um, don't let any online influencer or YouTube celebrity tell you otherwise. It is completely personal. Behind me is most of my collection. It has gone through a lot of changes over the years, and right now it's going through a midlife crisis, which is not a surprise because as a Gen Xer, my midlife crisis is just around the corner. It isn't a huge collection, and this is just part of it, but what you may not know is it has really changed throughout the decades and sometimes completely been replaced, or rotated, you might say. What stays the same is the key IPs or franchises that I know and love, the ones that make me who I am. It is obvious my collection interests are the same as my motto for the show, mostly the 80s. Some are timeless, but they're all firmly set in the greatest generation. Now, I'm not talking pre-World War II. I'm talking about the era of excess. I was born in the 70s, but raised by these guys in the greatest generation, the 1980s, the collect -em all generation. I was an original recipient of the original He-Man and Skeletor back in Christmas of 1981, and they've always had a real hold on me. But my tops, just by a hair, between Masters of the Universe and one other franchise, what do you think it is? That's right, GoBots. Okay, I should have my mouth washed out with soap with that one because of course I'm talking about the Transformers and anything Generation 1 or G1, and that's why I call myself the G1 host. If you couldn't tell here from my cotton top, I was around for all of these franchises' original debut. I saw them come and I've seen a few of them go, but for the most part, these franchises keep hanging on in some form or another. Let me give you an up close and personal look at my collection. Let's go. Okay, so my collection starts right here in the middle uh, with these very two famous guys. There's a few people who wouldn't recognize both Optimus Prime and Megatron of the Autobots and Decepticons. The Transformers, one of my favorite toy lines and franchises in the world. Most people also realize this came from a Japanese toy line or a collection of Japanese toy lines that Hasbro licensed back in 1984 under the name Transformers. I have uh, a huge, huge soft spot for Transformers the movie. This was the animated movie in 1986, which I saw and yes, shed a tear for the death of Optimus Prime. Yes some characters in there. This toy line is unreal and the reason I collect this toy line as I do is because I want to have every single character I wanted from the original Generation 1 or G1 as it's called and so I look for characters that represent the animated show or that animated movie the best. So I've collected everything in that Generation 1 I possibly can. There's a few standouts. Here are some of the Titans like Omega Supreme and some of the Gestalt characters uh, whether they're the Aerial Bots or the uh, Technobots. Now in front me are the Fembots or the female Autobots, the female uh, Transformers. Now they never made toy line uh, toys of these back in the 80s, but they were represented in the original animated cartoon. So when they came out, had to grab them. This one's unique. This is Windblade. She, uh, with her uh, kind of Asian-inspired look, was kind of adopted into the Generation 1, but she was fan-chosen uh, in the 21st century to join in to the Generation 1 continuity. Here we have um, uh, uh, oh, oh gosh, uh, not Metroplex, the other one. Uh, 
the huge Fortress Maximus. We've got Scorponok right here. Now, Piranacons, right, are the uh, Seacons who made Piranha King here. They're unique because they are part of G1 but weren't really featured in the US cartoon as much, but they were part and I wanted them. Um, we have so many characters, like I said, about these characters. They were uh, G1 characters, they were G1 toys, they were in the animated uh, TV show or the animated um, movie, and so I want to collect all of them. They may not be perfect in scale, um, but having all the the characters from that era was my goal and I wanted the best looking ones to uh, that represented best. So I've had so many of these characters before in so many of the toy lines. There's been so many from Robots in Disguise and uh, from uh, Energon and other named toy lines of the Transformers. But as I got them and other toys came out that better looked like the characters I remember, I went ahead and sold them and replaced them. So that is a little bit of how or why I collect the things I do. Making sure that Reflector there, the, the, the set of three, do form the actual camera. Uh, from the 80s um, and the articulation in the 21st century is so much better even characters like Runamuck and Runabout there who have never been in the animated series they did have toys in that period so I wanted to collect them as their more 21st century um, renditions came out here again is where I put our little too tall Unicron and some other random characters uh, that aren't really fitting in that collection but there is very uh, there's a really special one right here uh, this is Hoist. Hoist is a green pickup truck and I have this original G1 toy. Uh, so he is from 1984 because I went to Kmart with my mother back in 1984 and I remember it very fondly because she said, I'm going to get you a toy. What do you want? And it took a few minutes and I picked him. So I will never get rid of that. Now, I know that Gem and the holograms may seem like a lot of fluff, but to be perfectly honest, I think people throw it away as not much, but um, it is a fantastic uh, storyline uh, that Hasbro created regarding this uh, cool little uh, rock and roll uh, drama. It had a lot of cliffhangers and excitement and uh, yeah, there was glamour and there was fashion, I get it. But for the MTV generation, these videos, the music inspired the animation itself, a lot of fun. But the toys of the 80s, they kind of stank. So I never really collected anything of that until these new line of very expensive toys came out. Uh, ah, Just Can't Get Enough. This is a book. If you don't know this book, if you don't have a copy of Just Can't Get Enough, I really recommend that you get it. It opens like a trapper keeper from the 80s and everything inside it is exactly what and why. Uh, I love these IPs, these franchises that I do. I am so G1, I am so Generation 1 that even my She-Ra action figure there wears her tiara upside down. But this is the Masters of the Universe Origins line. I was so lucky in 1981 to get a, a unknown Skeletor and He-Man action figure for Christmas 1981. Christmas 1981. And that started my love of probably the most connected toy line I have uh, with, within my uh, brain, my soul, is, is He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. So now I am collecting this is a little different than Transformers. I collect these guys because they represent the toys that I collected a lot more, but they're very, very highly articulated modern day versions. Couple punk Funkos, Punkos, but now you'll notice this really empty, um, uh, empty shelf, but they end here with Mumra and Lion O. So you can kind of see where I'm going with that. Empty shelf will not be empty for long. This shelf's kind of random because a huge fan of Star Wars seeing in the late 70s, I loved myself the Mandalorian, but I do not collect Star Wars. And I have such an admiration for uh, Disney's foray into science fiction that I couldn't go without a little bit of my black hole and Tron love. I love the visually stunning and the storytelling I do like even though slow paced black hole is one of my favorites now here's another kind of blank shelf here with a little hint of what to come um, because as much as I love the DC comic heroes I won't be collecting any superhero type action figures at this time and my bottom shelf this is home to not just monsters not just classic monsters but truly my love my uh, passion for classic Hollywood that is the Hollywood through the 30s through the 60s the studio system but here represented in some of my favorite genres Genre, the horror movies of Universal Studios from the 30s even up through the 50s with uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. But if you look in the back, you'll see that it's a lot more than the horror movies. It's a lot about classic Hollywood, including Alfred Hitchcock, whom I love, and I love the Maltese Falcon and film noir. And of course, can't have all your horror movies without little Elvira, one of my favorite uh, celebrities in the world. And this is my toy collection, and I know there will be a lot more, and I'll bring it to you. Well, I hope you enjoyed a quick look at my collection as it is at the moment. Uh, before I go any further with my commentary on collecting, I want to share the big news. PopCon, powered by GX, will continue to connect you in a variety of ways to the world of pop culture realness, but we'll do in the near future in a new 
other way. PopCon, the talk show, an exciting co-hosted talk show that delves deep into the world of pop culture and lifestyle trends from the past and the uh, present, and hopefully will stand the test of time and join the ranks of other pop culture, pop, pop culture phenomena. With a co-host and games and spotlights and trivia, not to mention irreverent humor at times, you won't want to miss this new way we deliver PopCon to you. All right, so back to the topic at hand. Why are these specific franchises special? What makes someone collect the things they do? It shouldn't be surprising that most people collect something. It could be very tangible, they could be very minimal, they could be huge, they could be small, it could be all based on their economy or just simply their love or passion. Some people still collect baseball cards and stamps. So it really runs the gamut from sports memorabilia all the way to designer purses and everything in between. Now, why do I collect these things? It's simple. An emotional connection. Defined as a strong effective bond between a person and their possessions, emotional attachment to objects is associated with positive emotions such as pride, comfort, safety, and pleasure for valued possessions. Right. Others may collect for all kinds of reasons, and that we will explore those other reasons in future shows. But perhaps the planets and the stars were simply aligned in my case. Perhaps it was the exact age, I know I had to be the right age, in the right era and the perfect family dynamics. I was the youngest of 11 children. All of these may have been factors to why I collect what I do or a catalyst to it, but it's all summed up in the same way, an emotional connection. These stories behind me, the lore of the fictional characters and the fantastic worlds they populate, as cheesy as they come across now, have never been seen before. Well, they hadn't been seen before when they debuted. I was there when their storytelling and their mythology first debuted, and it was new to all of us. We were used to no-name, fill-in-the-blank, generic toys in the form of animals or um, human adventure people. Oh, sometimes there were licensed properties that were somewhere between an action figure and a doll made by the makers of, like, Mego. But nothing like this. Suddenly, there was a backstory. There were serious adventures, daring and high-stakes excitement. We were being served something new, and for my generation, we clamored for it. Oh, and they gave it to us like no other decade. And I'm sure it had a lot to do with the animated uh, accompaniments to these 100% injected molded plastics. But that whole marketing ploy all was also new and enticing. So many tie-ins, so much uh, products, merchandise that increased the story value that we had already bought into. And it just inspired us more and inspired our imaginations with new stories to tell. Sure, if you think about it. A young music executive turned rock star with the help of some holographic earrings. A special mission force that is as diverse as the United Colors of Benetton fighting terrorists. A group of autonomous cat people fighting an Egyptian mummy. Oh, wait, there is a little something to that one, right? Or perhaps a, a rich playboy who runs a bunch of masked vigilantes around uh, solving crimes. Or maybe it's the simple superhero trope used over and over again, but now used for a far-off techno-wizard barbarian and his sci-fi uh, world off in space. Today's standards... They could sound pretty silly, but when we played these roles on the playground with our friends or lived the adventures every day after school, how can you be surprised that they wouldn't become our heroes? We were inspired by them, wanted to emulate them, and if the only way to do that was to collect them all, so be it. I don't know what you collect or why, but whatever it is, I'm sure it brings you a lot of joy. Isn't that what it's about? As adult collectors, there's a lot of frustration in finding the things you want. When once toy owls look like this, they now look like this. I'm happy to be a pretty judicious collector. Actually, I'm finally getting to where I want to be with my collection. You know, having it around me simply sparks my imagination and helps me with my art. Yes, I create graphic art and illustration with a firm grip of pop culture and the 80s. And a lot of times that will be featured here on PopCon. Now, I don't want to use this time to plug my designs, but since you were wondering, you can find all kinds of humorous and iconic illustrations by Collection82. That's me. Follow Collection82 on Instagram or shop now at Collection82 on Facebook. I will leave links in the description too. Now, having all this reminds me where I've come from. And that's important. I like that. Funny, I can honestly say that with four more Transformers, I'm done. Which is a pretty weird thing to say because really, are you ever done? Isn't there always just that one more? But after years, I think I'm getting it right, and I can move on to the other franchises that excite me and fill in some of these empty spots, especially this one, save for a certain castle. And when I get that castle, it's going to be like my 10th birthday all over again. You know, it's only been within the last 20 years that adult collectors could, if I can steal a phrase, come out of the proverbial closet. Actually, probably basement is more like it. It benefits to be a geek nowadays, or however you want to refer to it. I get a kick out of that. As for something that was once simply laughed at or ridiculed because of the nature of the subject matter, it is now not only normal, but celebrated. 
and you can make some financial returns if done right. Superheroes might be on top at the cinema and a lot of collectors' collections, but the rest of these pop culture icons and fantasy characters are right alongside for the ride. To those who think it's still odd, I have to wonder if it's any stranger than collecting the autographs or wearing the jersey of favorite sports heroes. These were our heroes. They did the impossible. Everything we wanted to do, to become, they helped us be the people we are today. This is PopCon. I'm Victor. And I'm an adult collector. Until next time.